Well, I guess it's been like a week. Probably ought to tell you guys about my trip to New Jersey. Damn, it's windy out here. Let's take this inside. Oh my gosh, that's way better. Uh, and I also got whatever the heck that was stuck in my eye. Um, hey everybody, it's Ron, Ron's Computer Videos. Uh, <clears throat> sorry for this is taking so long to get this video out, mostly because I've been sick. Um, you can probably hear it in my voice a little bit, uh, but it's, I don't know if it's allergies or what, or con crud or whatever the kids are calling it these days, but I've just not felt super well. So it's taken me a bit to kind of put this all together. What I wanted to do is maybe take a few minutes today to talk about the amazing time that I had at VCF East uh, here just like a week or so ago. Uh, I got to go and hang out with my good friend uh, Steve from Mac84, uh, Mike of formerly Mike's Mac Shack, but I think it's now going to be called Mike's Mess. Uh, also, uh, Sean from Action Retro, uh, uh, Tech Knight, um, it, I mean, like the list goes on and on of people. Colin Mister uh, from Dos the Dusty One. Uh, I, I mean, it's uh, Adrian Black. I mean, it's like a huge long list of people that were there. Um, and I may not mention everybody, and I apologize up front. I, d I don't have pictures of everything. Um, I did my best to try to document as much as I could, uh, but maybe I saw 20% of everything that was there uh, just because of going around and talking to people and trying to uh, get B-roll for different things. But uh, a lot of it is documented out on my YouTube channel, uh, where you're at right now. Uh, kind of in the shorts section, I did shorts uh, that were just sort of like one-off topics. And then I did uh, maybe two, two to five minute interviews with different people based on whatever it is that they were displaying. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you some pictures of some neat stuff that I saw. And then I'm going to uh, maybe show you a video of like some pickups that I did. And then uh, I might tease some of the... Uh, uh, YouTube videos and things like that. So you guys can go out and decide if you want to watch any of that. All right, here we go. As with all stories, this one starts in the beginning. Um, this is me and Steve uh, kind of getting ready to drive over to uh, the event on Friday. Um, we kind of got up early and got everything organized, loaded in the vehicle, and then uh, hit the road over to, I think it takes place in Wall, New Jersey. Uh, it's kind of a neat uh, site if you uh, you haven't been there before it's a uh, retired military base that has uh, barracks and stuff set up and the event itself kind of takes place in all of these different parts of the barracks uh, there's a museum that functions year-round uh, for retro computing there's uh, there's a museum that basically uh, talks about maritime uh, radio operations there's a uh, a club that meets there that just does model railroading there's a lot going on there there's a fire department um the uh the first day there on friday with doing setup and stuff there were people that were already there that had things on display like this genesis mp this is a multiprocessor mac from our macintosh clone from back in the day uh it's just sort of a neat machine um there was also a next cube kind of uh parked right next to it uh, it was kind of neat that uh, there was a lot of this stuff on display. And as you can see, there's a mono slab kind of mono slab turbo sitting underneath that. Um, of course, Quadro 950, you can't uh, you can't have a computer show without a machine that um, uh, breaks down half the time. Actually, this one was up all weekend. I was really, really impressed. Uh, sometimes these machines are hard to keep going. Uh, uh, Network Server 500, that's something you don't really see every day. I know that um, 65 Scribe did kind of a cool video showing the ins and outs of this. Um, there was a Lisa you could get up, you could get up there and mess around with, but I think this one spent most of its time sort of in a, uh, like a terminal environment. I think that they you can terminal into the, uh, the Network Server 500. I, I don't remember exactly. Um, there was an Apple III on display uh, with uh, the uh, the additional drives and stuff, which is kind of neat to see all in plate or all in one place. Uh, there was a B box that was uh, running to blink and lights all weekend. It was kind of neat. You could go up and play around with that as well. Um, this is Mike from Mike's uh, mess, I guess now. Uh, this is his uh, prototype G5 iMac. Uh, it looks like a regular G5 iMac, but this one actually has a compact flash slot on the back. 
uh, for like media for getting media stuff into it it's just it's sort of neat I don't remember Mike's exact story of how he ended up with it but I'm sure if you reach out to him and ask he could tell you uh, this is um, this is owned by Sean from Action Retro this is a like a replacement case for the G4 cube uh, it was just sort of a weird thing that was only sold for a very short period of time and he had transferred his machine into it it also gives you a little bit of extra space for uh, airflow and adding additional uh, sort of um, add-ons to the machine uh, here's Adam from Adam's Apple he's sitting there playing with Sean's Apple one uh, he had a card in it that actually had like all the Apple one software so you could basically try out anything which was pretty cool hey there's me I had a little uh, Steve was really nice he printed this up for me that uh, basically you could get more information about me I had some little doodads to give away some stickers I had buttons and stuff like that too uh, but some of that stuff uh, disappeared Maybe after the first day, just people people nabbing stuff as they uh, going around filling up their uh, their bag of goodies. Here's Steve. Um, Steve was, as you could tell, he was very excited to be there. Uh, he was very excited to have all of his stuff on display. You should go and watch his video. His video is really a really cool recap of um, of some some of the exhibits and stuff that were on display there. Um, this is a PC100. This is a IBM uh, laptop or mini laptop that was released kind of only in Japan. And um, the I used to have one of these back in the day. I traded a guy for one. And you can run Windows 95 on it. You can do a lot of other stuff. They're pretty neat. Now they're like unobtainium and super expensive. And I'm really kicking myself for selling mine. But it was kind of neat. There were a couple of them on display. This one was um, over there at the booth uh, about all the IBM technology. Uh, as you can see, uh, Thomas from Amiga of Rochester always putting out a big, huge spread of neat stuff for people to look at. I'm joking, of course. He arrived a little bit late, but he got his stuff all in place and went through and was just like repairing stuff left and right for people. It was really nice that he was there doing that. Um, this is the oddities and commodities uh, table. This is Colin Misters that uh, just had a bunch of neat stuff on it. Um, Chad Baxter was also running the booth with him there at the event, and uh, like I think that's Chad's uh, abacus uh, calculator there and some other just weird things um, they had uh, like external video cards on a MacBook and and just all kinds of neat stuff that's also uh, over there in the corner is uh, a Clie or not a Clie but it's some sort of like Sony like super ultra portable laptop and I think it was running Mac OS um, this is the uh, sort of the YouTubers uh, panel that took place on, I think, Saturday. Uh, this had Adrian Black and, and Fran from Fran's Lab and other cool people up there uh, just kind of chatting about their channels and what they got, got them excited about uh, retro technology. So you should definitely go out to VCF East um, YouTube and check it out. You can watch the whole video. I know that people had problems with streaming, but uh, that should definitely get that resolved. Um, this was uh, Dave Levitt's table. This is um, Usagi Electronics, which uh, you saw Dave. He was up there on stage just a second ago. Uh, that it's just some of the neat stuff that he's got, like uh, like his machine. That basically it's just all vacuum tube based. It's uh, it runs a little hot, but you know you can you can definitely uh, see some neat stuff that he's got going on at all times. Um, this is Michael. This is somebody that I met new at the event, and I did a video. Um, he's got he had a Power PC upgrade card for like his uh, Power Mac or not Power Mac, but uh, uh, Performa 575. So um, I did a little short video about that because he was super excited to get that up and running. But um, he actually had a display all set up with all these machines kind of set up with classroom software. He did have one of them running Marathon because let's be honest, probably back in the day you did play a little bit of Marathon on the uh, the the school PCs or the work PC or the work Macs and all that, but it was kind of neat. He had a whole table set up with stuff. The uh, the LC2 right there actually has a 2E option card in it, so he was uh, displaying. Um, he basically had that running in 2E mode the whole time. Um, this is um, uh, a cool booth that was set up. It's uh, Erica and um, and oh my gosh, um, Andrea that were uh, uh, displaying like all the neat stuff you could do with MIDI on Macintosh. And they did a video about this as well. So they actually had the booth set up in a way that you could go on one side and you get a floppy disk and you come over and use Cubase to um, sort of just like write your own music. And then and you could use a keyboard and all that type of stuff. And then you could save it and take it home with you, which I thought was kind of a neat concept. 
Um, this is also something kind of neat um, the, as part of the vendor fair stuff. And I did a video about this as well, that um, they had these really cool uh, sort of like, you know, ISA card and PCI card adapters where you could put your cards on display. I thought that was really neat. I met them at um, uh, Vintage Computer Festival Midwest last year. And they just had all kinds of new and cool stuff, including uh, floppy disk boxes and um, like a programmable LED display and some other neat stuff. But anyway, definitely have to watch the video about that one. Um, like here is, I've just got a, a, a like an Apple, Apple, uh, you know, an Apple II, Apple One card in it. So, um, but I got to meet a lot of really cool people um, that I had not met in person before. Like this is Justin D. Morgan uh, with his hat for once. Um, and uh, it was kind of neat to meet him and just kind of catch up. And of course, there's Steve once again. Uh, there's <laughs> Retro Tech Chris and uh, Tom Barber there in the background photobombing us. And uh, there's Tom Barber once again. I know Tom's been kind of scarce recently, so it was kind of nice to uh, meet up with him in person. Uh, there is Tech Knight. Uh, Tech Knight has a really cool display. It's about all the uh, sort of analog TV technology. It's, um, I think a lot of people kind of call it the... Uh, the weather channel display because uh, there are some there's some weather channel equipment that's kind of built into that and then also a mac tv and some other neat stuff but it's just uh, it's really kind of neat to explore that world if you aren't from that era um i also got to meet some cool guys from the fujinet project uh, i did a video with them as well that just kind of goes through and uh, shows a demonstration of fujinet on the apple II. Um, since it's april 2 uh this whole month that uh, it was just kind of neat to be able to uh, check that all out. Two super cool guys, that are very excited about the Fujinet project. Um, Dos Fox, and I, I cannot remember the, the other gentleman's name. <laughs> I feel so bad, but uh, Dos Fox took like 400 million photos of um, everything that was going on at the uh, the event. So it was uh, it was kind of neat, and I've, I've followed up and got to see some of the the cool photos that he took. I mean, there's literally like it's documented. If, if he was in the room, it was documented. So that was really cool. Um, this gentleman here, I don't know his name. And I, I, if anybody uh, knows his name and could share that with me, I'd appreciate it. But he had some very interesting stories kind of about the early days of computing. And uh, he just kind of was uh, going around sharing his knowledge with people. Really nice guy. Um, I saw uh, there was a gentleman that came in with this uh, Wayne Computers uh, shirt. I'm going to say it's not official, <laughs> but uh, it was just kind of a funny thing. And when I, I stopped him and took the photo, he was like, ah, finally somebody got it. The Simpsons reference. Um, I guess this was uh, given to Sean uh, from Action Retro. Uh, this was featured kind of in an April Fool's Day uh, joke this year of boxed Macintosh accelerators that this was like stuck kind of down in a corner so that way that maybe it wouldn't be like just blaring in the face but uh, I posted a picture of this online and it kind of exploded on Twitter uh, people were like oh my gosh like this is just so amazing like you know I, uh, it's it's so great that they made something like this and it's no they didn't no it's uh, I guess the 060 uh, there's some fundamental problems with using it on a Mac um, I know there's a lot of Amiga stuff that, that use 060s um, you know to accelerate those machines but i guess there's some fundamental incompatibility with how a macintosh works so that's why they uh, bypassed that and went to uh, power pc back in the day uh, i did get to wear uh, one of justin's hats um, i asked permission first and uh, i may be the only person that has worn one other than him and lived um, this was uh, they did the streamers panel and it was uh, mike and uh, steve and sean and then also Dave Murray, the 8-bit guy, um, which was kind of weird because Dave doesn't do a lot of streaming. So a lot of the questions ended up being fielded by the other three guys that do a lot of streaming. So it was uh, it was kind of fun to uh, sit on on that too. Uh, I took some pictures kind of from the audience. Um, I, did, I did get to ask a question or two, and it turns out that uh, uh, Dave Murray does not validate parking. Um, but then this is the after show and everybody just kind of stood around and they chatted for a few minutes. Um, I think this is the panel where they also gave away an Apple II and they gave away a, uh, um, whatever the heck that thing is called, that new, that new thing, uh, a Naboo. Um, this is uh, Sleepy Malibu. If you uh, know him, he, uh, he actually has like all kinds of really cool uh, Commodore 64 add-ons. Like he's got like a quick DOS ROM replacement. 
uh, for those machines and a couple of other things, which are, or Jiffy DOS rather, um, which is which was kind of neat. He showed me, and we went and talked to Thomas Armstrong, and he put it under the microscope and was checking it out. And I, I took a video of that. Um, here's Colin. Uh, he was over there actually. Um, you should go and watch the video that is on Action Retro's page or YouTube right now, um, all about uh, the world's first G3 upgrade for the um, uh, the twentieth anniversary Mac. Uh, Colin did a BGA replacement. I originally, I was going to bring a board. I was going to have him do the same thing for my 6500, but I accidentally sent the wrong board. I mailed the wrong board. Uh, the one I mailed um, has a, like a, you know, not a, a, a BGA processor on it. It's got just a regular surface mount chip. And Colin was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, oh dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I'll, I'll send mine off one day and get it replaced. But yeah, they were uh, serious biz. They were there uh, doing those upgrades. Um, I also took a little bit of a walk around the uh, perimeter of the, the place because, again, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And much of it is kind of derelict. It's just sort of like it's there, but nobody's maybe using the space. So um, here's a fuse box with huge fuses in it. Um, a little bit further down, uh, there was a display of military vehicles. So I stopped for a few minutes and I not necessarily my thing but you know when in rome you can check some stuff out so um just took some took some photos of the different stuff that was on display there uh a little bit further down as you could see there were several other um, organizations that were running out of the back side of that like i think there was like a, a charity organization that got furniture to um, families that are in need uh there's also the fire you see a fire truck back there the fire department was back there um this more more stuff um i thought this was really great it's eye hazard area uh definitely gonna wear my safety squints going in there i did but i just thought this was a very picturesque this be like a cool background so i was like i'll take a picture of that um and uh dave uh was running a uh booth and i did a video about this i uh, steve did a video about this it was kind of neat he had a pdp8 that would um with a camera set up to where you would take a picture, it would write it to the reel to reel, and then it would use, uh, basically it would turn it into ASCII art, and then you had a, a line printer. So like a, like a printer that's got like a band, or a band printer, line printer, whatever you'd like to call it. And it would print your uh, picture out on Green Bar. And I just thought that was really neat. And I also thought that picture of President Kennedy was kind of neat. That's uh, some very old, uh, old stuff that he's got printed out there. Uh, this is a picture that I took with um, uh, Justin that's uh, using Kara's, I think it's called um, Trash Cam. It's, uh, it's an app that she sells, uh, so you should check that out. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, Alex from the um, the SD project. I bumped into him there, had a really cool conversation. Um, hopefully uh, uh, he'll see this and he'll say hi. So, hey. Uh, there was uh, a, a thing that kind of happened last year where they had parked a, a Macintosh SE kind of in not ideal uh, circumstances for a while to see if it would power on. I think it powered on last year. Uh, this year they left it in a creek for six months and then like buried it in the ground for like another three or four months. And then they dug it up and they were like, oh my gosh, we're going to see if this thing works. And they had a bunch of people sign it. And, uh, and so my signature's on there too. They took it over to Dave Murray. Dave Murray's, what the hell is that? He didn't say that, but he was like, what the heck is this? And they kind of explained everything. And then uh, he was like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll sign it for you. And then they invested a little bit of time outside trying to get it to power on. Uh, spoiler alert, it did not. Uh, the power supply was too far gone. Uh, the motherboard probably, the, I mean, the SE is pretty resilient. So I'm, I'm fairly certain that the, the board would have booted if they had had a good power supply to test it with. but. But the, uh, it was, it was kind of neat to see uh, everybody kind of just so excited about to see if this darn thing would boot. Um, later in the day, I uh, was checking out some silica graphic stuff and I took a picture of me taking a picture, which of course would be uh, the, the, the ultimate uh, use of all of this expensive technology. Um, also got to, oh, sorry, Jason, can't really see your face, uh, but um, Got to see uh, Jason and uh, got to meet the, this gentleman here in the middle. He's uh, from InfoSec, so I guess he uh, volunteers at this place year round. Um, it uh, it's it's kind of cool. He um, he has like a big display of uh, silicon graphics stuff. Um, 
this is um, Erica and Andrea once again. This is uh, the folks from the uh, mini display. So they were really excited and they got their picture taken and stuff with uh, the PDP-8. There's David uh, actually uh, setting it up. And um, as it was taking pictures, you had two options. You could actually have a picture taken or you could um, have that printout made. And if you just got the picture taken, it's a black and white camera. So you had, you actually had like, like a red and a green and a blue lens and he would take your photo and then it would sort of like mesh them together and so each time you had to capture and it wrote it out to the the reel to reel and then it you know kind of reprocessed it but it used the laptop to get it out somewhere where you could actually do some more stuff with it and uh there's the pdb8 setup the thing on the bottom my understanding are like floppy disks for additional storage and then there's the reel to reel uh storage there the deck mag magna tape or mag tape uh set up on the top um this is dave from uh, uh dave's vintage video tech or vintage or, or retro video tech i'm getting it wrong sorry dave uh but he had all kinds of neat stuff to share and lots of cameras and things like that you can go through it's pretty cool um <coughs> uh here's adrian um acting a fool and uh, this gentleman here um I, it's it's uh, unusual technology or amazing unusual technology it's got a long name and it's it's ah it's escaping me right now but uh definitely um i'll try to put it there in the comments uh steve gave me a button while i was there too um this is uh i am i am john malkovich it's like a two for one on outdated references for i omega and the movie being john malkovich uh while we were there uh we actually uh went over to leonardo in new jersey which is the home of quick stop if you're familiar with uh, the Kevin Smith universe, um, I was uh, it was kind of cool to be able to get a photo out there. I wasn't even supposed to be there that day. We went inside and they were very kind. Let me take a uh, a few photos of things. Um, it's not the exact same counter as uh, all those years ago, but it is it is kind of cool. So and uh, everything like the back and the bathroom and the 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 refrigerated cabinets, it's all the same. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was just, it was just sort of a, a neat kind of a like nineties thing to maybe go and explore. Uh, we also went up to Mount and I'm forgetting the name. Uh, gosh, I should have looked it up first, but, uh, it's basically the highest point on the Eastern seaboard as, um, as there is a, a, a placard there that uh, tells you all the information about it. Uh, the, uh, supposedly, I guess you can, that's Sandy Hook, New Jersey over there. Uh, but when you look out across this, you're able to see like the New York city and all kinds of other stuff, but there was a lot of, a lot of overcast, a lot of haze that day. So we really couldn't see it, but again, uh, Mount Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Placard. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's the highest, uh, point of elevation on the, uh, Eastern seaboard, uh, or the Atlantic seaboard. Sorry. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it was kind of neat to like look out and see all the stuff. I uh, got a picture of me and Steve up there. Uh, they had some stuff that was under construction, so we didn't get to see a whole lot of that. But later that day, we went to the former location of Bell Labs, uh, which is, uh, it's now called Bell Works. And uh, it's uh, the old Bell Labs uh, location uh, where they invented the transistor, I guess, and some other things of, of significant uh, sort of interest to humanity uh, took place in this building. The um, uh, it was it was kind of neat. It, like the whole place kind of looks like a giant mall of sorts, uh, and it's where they film uh, Severance for Apple Plus. Um, while we were there that day, we actually hung out for a little bit and kind of snooped around and went over to wardrobe and maybe try to see if we could sneak in on things and that, that did not happen but that's okay still a really good time it's a very beautiful building i'd never been in there before um video village was uh pretty uh pretty packed they had a lot of people they had a lot of stuff going on uh but uh, this area back here it was just people going about their daily business i guess they film in there all the time because this is one of their their big locations for uh guess uh, whatever like the place where all the people work when they're not like at home um and uh, kind of a neat fountain there at the far end but uh there was a giant transistor out front um uh, just uh, sort of a big display i took a couple photos of it i thought it was kind of neat um but that pretty much wraps up all of the kind of the normal photos that i just took while i was out there 
Um, I took more video than anything else. And again, you can check that out. There'll be uh, a link to the uh, uh, the playlist with all the shorts and all the regular videos. And I did one live video while I was there too. There was just a walk around. Uh, so you should definitely check those out. But let's take a few minutes and let's talk about uh, thing, things I got uh, or things that I picked up at, uh, at the show. One of the cool things that I picked up that uh, people at home might appreciate is this uh, Performa 575. Anybody that's got one of these uh, will tell you that they don't want to give them up. And uh, they definitely probably don't want to give them up for $85. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure how I scored this deal other than the fact that it was just in the right place at the right time. Uh, the machine itself uh, did not have the faceplate. So down there, the cover uh, that sits in front of the CD-ROM and the floppy drive was not there. Uh, it was actually like this was on the ground under a table and the faceplate was like stuck behind the machine, laying face down on the ground about a foot behind the computer. And I was like, I was like, cause I looked at it and I, it does have the Apple, like the M model number on it. And I looked at it and I was like, what the heck is that? I was like, isn't this like a, isn't this like a 550 or a 575? And so I um, lean the machine forward because I'm like, there's no way for $85 that this has a motherboard in it. I leaned it forward. Yeah, it had a motherboard in it. Pulled the board out. It's a 575 board. Saw the faceplate uh, laying on the, the ground behind it. I was like, yep, this is mine. I don't care if it boots or not because I need a chassis. And always fix up the chassis. So I went ahead and slapped the board back in, put all the stuff on it, carried it up front. $85 later, she was mine. Um, I've wanted one of these for a while. I've, I've got a five, I've got a color classic. I've got a 550 motherboard to put in my color classic. M many thanks to Joe from Joe's computer museum. Uh, and then I also have a, uh, uh, Performa 580, which is not really the same thing. Those, uh, those machines are very fragile and, uh, they're also, they're, they're quadra level, but they're IDE based. So they're kind of their own thing. They also have a cheaper display. They don't have the nice Sony display. So this was a real find. And I, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time, I guess, to pick this up. So very appreciative. And then also there's a lot of stuff that because it's just coming back and forth, I had to leave at Steve's. So I've actually got a video that we should watch, um, that shows all of those items. Here's some of the neat items that were either given to me or I've got off the free pile or maybe picked up. Uh, there's some uh, cool floppy disks that Michael that was doing the, the Macintosh classroom exhibit showed off. Those were kind of fun. Apple II disks, kind of a starter collection, if you will. Something else kind of neat that I picked up, I picked up on Saturday. Um, they were located kind of over by the computer museum and it was the, uh, the Fuji, FujiNet project and uh, the Fuji Apple, which is what they, I guess, call the Apple II adapter. But I've wanted one of these for a while. Um, Javier's done a number of videos about them. I've watched other stuff online. It just looks like a really neat way to uh, kind of get your Apple II um, online and um, kind of communicating with other people. And I, I like the fact that you can uh, just download the stuff directly to the device. It's kind of cool. This is something else uh, kind of neat that I found. It's a uh, MPU IPC. This is a adapter that plugs into the Roland MPU 401. This is uh, really required if you want to hook up your uh, mini devices to your 401. I, I don't know why this was on the free pile, but I'm glad it was. Also in a big box of free stuff that um, uh, Joel Crane, PotatoFi, sent in, um, there's like some really nice uh, serial cables and uh, there were hard drive kits for uh, like LC2s and all, like power supplies and all kinds of fun stuff. You just wanted to go on the free pile. Um, and then a bunch of these Apple 2GS uh, video or video cables. So I needed a couple extra of those just for different projects. So it was really nice that Joel uh, sent those to us to then put on the free pile. Not really framed in all that great, but this is a... Um, a conserver, which is an Apple II GS uh, specialized power supply. Um, these things are, are kind of neat. Um, it has a little removable bay, so you can drop like two, three and a half inch drives in it, or you can use this little uh, floppy disk holder um, and uh, like a single three and a half inch drive. Um, it's just kind of cool. I've always wanted one. Here's the back side. Um, those buttons on the front where it's like the one, two, and then like the master, you can actually have it set up to where you can hit one, you can hit the other, or you can just turn them all on uh, with one big button. 
and that's really it. Um, it was kind of an amazing weekend, but oh my gosh, it just, it, it was so draining. <laughs> uh, recording all the videos, interviewing all the people, running back and forth, late nights, um, stretched out days, um, all the walking. Uh, there's a lot of walking to be done because everything is kind of spread out a little bit. So if you've not been to VCF East, it would be my advice for you to go at least once to check things out. Um, I had a really great time and I'm going to do my best to be back next year. Um, I even did a video about it where I uh, tried to get a bunch of people that were, uh, you know, uh, there maybe for the first time to see what gauge what the reaction, see something cool that they had bought or maybe been given. Uh, something neat that they had seen on display and then whether they would be back and overwhelmingly everybody said they were going to be back again next year so i hope that you give it a shot and i hope that you check out some of the other cool vcf east content that uh, other creators are making and uh and try to get there next year it's it's new jersey it's it's america's um official joke state no more uh when you've got cool things going on in your state like uh, vcf east um there's nothing to sneeze at so anybody Everybody, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening, and as I always say, Apple II forever.